Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another video. My name is Justin. Today's upload, I'm going to be going through a few ideas for stocking a 120 gallon reef tank um, fish wise and you know, just sort of giving my take on um, on what would be a half decent stocking list and and some of the fish that I am interested in putting in this new reef tank. So um, watch along and um, hope you guys take something out of this video. Alrighty, so you've got yourself a 120 gallon reef tank or if you're in, um, you know, Europe, UK, pretty much the rest of the world, uh, a 450 litre tank and um, it can be a little bit overwhelming at the start because it's a fairly decent size aquarium and um, there is quite a bit of space. So um, let's just take it into account that uh, the 120 gallon tank that I'm re referring to would be a four foot wide, uh, four foot long tank by two foot wide by a two foot high. So a pretty decent footprint. Um, and, uh, and yeah, that's sort of the dimensions that uh, I'm working off. Now, like I said before, it's sort of easy to get carried away and place a whole bunch of big fish into the tank without really sort of thinking through um, if, you know, these are sort of the correct fish that you'd want to keep in your reef tank long term. Now, um, in this case, I'm the way I'm stocking my tank, um, and just keep in mind, guys, the, these are, um, you know, stocking lists um, for me personally. Um, so there's going to be some things that, uh, you know, some sort of i guess fish that you may want to keep that uh, i probably wouldn't but um yeah um so like i was saying you've got to keep in mind that um you know if you want to keep a reef tank um without having to worry about you know a lot of your corals sort of getting you know nipped and bothered by a few certain fish um it definitely does cancel quite a lot out so that's what I sort of want to, you know, um, get across in this video. This is a list of fish that I've sort of come up and put together of, of um, species that generally, uh, for the most part, go pretty hand in hand uh, with corals and won't really pose any threats to, you know, your snails and vertebrates um, and, you know, their other tank mates. So let's get into it. Um, hopefully this video won't be too long, but Hopefully it's long enough for you guys to sort of get something out of it. Now, um, I have done a video like this before and I've always started off by saying, make sure you guys always sort of take into consideration, um, you know, sort of the fish health and their dietary requirements before you get them. Um, Cause those are obviously, you know, really sort of important things. If you're getting a fish that's, you know, looking pretty sick in, in the fish shop um, or your local, you know, aquarium, it's, uh, it's not a good start. So, um, so just keep that in mind and, uh, you know, also it's, it's handy to know where the fish was collected or if it's, um, captive bred, but, um, anyway, I'm going to list the fish that I would go with in order this time. Um, and, and we'll sort of go from there. So I'd like to start off with the blue chromis. Um, this is a, a fish that you'd find pretty much in the top part of uh, coral flats and coral reefs around the world um, in my opinion or in, in in one of my previous videos i i said that clownfish in my opinion were the hardiest fish and i'd like to change that and say that in my you know experience blue chromies are uh, the hardiest reef fish available um, i've kept a few now and for me they're pretty much bulletproof through diseases and uh, parameter swings and, and things like that and for me they're an excellent starter fish uh, they're hardy easy to feed and just an all-around pretty peaceful fish just remember guys um, if you're keeping them in a small group they will tend to pick each other off uh, so I guess that's the only sort of downside about them uh, personally I am only keeping one at the moment I would like to have them in a school but I'd hate for the original one to uh, to get picked off so I'm very wary of that um, but anyway to the second fish um, it is a very common fish and one that pretty much most people will have and that is none other than the clownfish um, for me I'm thinking of going with a peculiar clownfish um, uh in in this particular setup i've had pretty much most of the other species of clowns and um for me something about peculiar is a very nice they're 
not rare, but you know, they're probably not as common as your Ocellaris and your Clarkies and things like that. Um, in my opinion, it's it's best to see if you can get a captive bred pair of Perculas. Um, yeah, I think they tend to be sort of less aggressive and um, they generally do well with um, tank mates and a, you know, a great sort of starter fish. All right, so the next fish on the list is called the Bangai Cardinal. Um, also found in reefs, um, sometimes in, in decent schools, but um, obviously they take up, you know, I guess a, a decent section. Apparently um, in the wild they host uh, like urchins and things like that. Um, so in my opinion, they're a great sort of starter fish in the sense that um, they're relatively peaceful. And if you get them in early in the tank and get them eating, they tend to, you know, stay pretty hardy and can and can actually live for quite a bit. Um, in my opinion, in a reef tank, I would personally get either one or two um, and try and stray away from getting a group as uh, the dominant, uh, as uh, two of them will inevitably, inevitably pair up and, um, and harass and uh, potentially kill the rest of the members. Um, so Bangar Cardinals... Uh, used to be a, quite a common fish in the reef hobby. Um, I, I don't know about, uh, you know, wherever you guys are watching this from, but, you know, uh, in Melbourne, Australia, they're becoming uh, quite rare. Uh, I'm not sure if uh, they're being collected or captive raised, but, um, uh, yeah, just something to sort of think of. Um, the next fish is uh, we look at is the Rass family um, or, or fish from the Rass family. Um, you know, in previous videos, I would have definitely recommended a lot more different species of wrasse. Um, but in this instance, you, if you want to keep a sort of a peaceful um, and, and, and a reef tank that you sort of not going to have to worry about any fish, um, sort of nipping at corals, nipping at invertebrates, um, look at fairy wrasse. I know in countries outside of Australia, they can be a bit pricey, but in my experience, they are super hardy. And if you get um, a few in at the same time into your tank, they usually do very well. And I'm talking about the blue head, uh, the red head, and a yellow fairy wrasse. Uh, for me, those are big, um, big additions that I would like to get. Uh, I have pretty much kept all of them in the past, and they've been, you know, pretty awesome for me. Um, just one thing to remember: try get them in at the same time because uh, if you do have one. Um, and it has the tank to itself for a while. If you do try add another one after, you will probably run into trouble. Uh, for me, they eat pretty well, and I've never seen fairy wrasse pick on any invertebrates or nip any corals. So they're pretty good um, in that sense. Next, we're going to look at some um, sort of more, I guess, interesting fish, and that's none other than the Blenny. Um, it's a pretty straightforward fish. There is a minor sort of caution with this fish. Um, in my experience, I've had quite a few bicolors. They sometimes can nip fleshy LPS corals, um, but I guess it is a very sort of minor occurrence, and I feel it's only when you add um, new corals into the tank. I guess they're more of a curious fish, so uh, you know, possibly you can add them, I guess, later on or last into the tank after you've added a few corals and stuff, but. Nevertheless, um, they are a pretty, pretty fun fish. Um, personally, I'd go for the Midas Blenny or the Bicolor Blenny. Um, they seem to be the most commonly available and I guess the easiest to keep. And um, just remember, in a one in 120 gallon tank, um, even though they are, I guess, a, a decent, uh, even, the, even though the tank is a decent size, um, just be cautious of keeping more than one uh, blenny species in the same tank as they probably will find each other and wrestle. Uh, next fish, we're going to start looking at tangs. Um, you know, in previous videos, I would have recommended like easily a blue tang and a tank this size, but I'm sort of going to switch it up. Um, I'm going to look at, uh, at getting a, a Tamini tang. And, uh, and possibly a sailfin. Uh, I think in a previous video I said, uh, you know, in my opinion, a yellow tang was the hardiest tang of all. Again, I'm going to change that opinion and say, uh, uh, you know, some uh, species from the bristle tooth family are probably a bit more hardy, and I'm going to go with the Tamini tang. Um, bristle, bristle tooth tangs tend to be also, you know, probably some of the most peaceful tangs. Um, 
um, you know, or species from the tang family. And uh, yeah, they're all around a pretty nice fish and, and some of them come in uh, some pretty nice colors. So um, I'm looking at, yeah, a Tumini and a Selfin. And then um, just a Selfin because, you know, I've had one before and they tend to be pretty decent, but it's sort of like, you know, a question mark around it. It's one of those things where if a nice one comes up, um, you consider it, otherwise they're pretty uh, common still. Um, so now we're starting to get to the end of the list um, for me and it's probably towards the more sort of boisterous, uh, I guess aggressive um, type fish. But um, so there is two kinds that I'm looking at. One is an orchid dotty back to start off with. Um, this fish, I guess, like it's, uh, it's hit and miss. I've heard a lot of things. Um, if you add it last, it can, you know, and as long as it's got a, a small a small home it should be fine um, it'll obviously be fine with your corals and stuff and you, sh you won't see it nipping anything like that you've just got to be wary of um, adding you know fish that resemble uh, another orchid dotty back obviously um, it's a single species uh, fish so one per tank um, and try not to get any like purple wrasse or anything after you've added that because it would probably go bananas but um, it, it will be a nice uh, addition to your reef tank and it'll look, um, you know, fairly not, uh, fairly good. Uh, the next for me um, is, is Zeal Damsels. Now, I know a lot of people sort of look down upon damsels and I think it's because um, they get a bad rep as, you know, some species of damsels can be, you know, quite aggressive. But I think a lot of like the Yellowtails, the Zeus, um, Talbots, um, and, if, and a few others they're actually um, quite peaceful and if you get your timing right with adding them they they usually are fine and they won't really mess with um, anything it's only an issue when you add them first and then you try add small fish afterwards so um, I, I'm, I'm personally going to go with is your damsels and then with that you can get either one or a small school and um, sort of see how you go I'm not sure how um, you know, if they'll pick each other off, if you, I think if you've got enough rock, rock work and stuff, they should be uh, fine. All right, guys. So that's pretty much my personal list for um, for what I sort of sort of want to see in my reef tank um, currently. Um, and next, I'm going to talk about a few sort of optionals that um, you know, I guess you could look at under the right. <clears throat> sorry, excuse me. Um, you know, sort of condition conditions and circumstances. So I'm going to start off the, um, with the optionals with a, uh, a Dispar Anthea slash, you know, like a Lyotel Anthea. Now these fish are obviously beautiful sort of schooling fish, um, but you need to have a few of them to sort of, um, you know, make them feel comfortable. But they do require, um, you know, heavy feedings and um, some pretty good flow. So um, you, and you sort of may struggle uh, to get them feeding initially so it's one of those things where if you come across you know like a really healthy pair or like um sorry not a pair a really healthy school or someone's shutting their tank down and they've got a few and you've got a you know, really good opportunity to get them that's when i'd recommend them or um you can give them a shot and see how you go um for me i'd personally add them sort of to what's the start to the middle of um of your sort of stocking of the tank um the next fish you can sort of look as an optional um, is a yellow tang now um, in, a, in a four foot 120 gallon it's um, you know from like a few years ago I'd say you know I would be fine in a 120 but it's still sort of you know personally a question mark um, I think for like it should be okay for a while but I just think it's like I've sort of changed my outlook on tangs seeing you know massive tangs in, in smaller tanks and particularly in four foots it like it just kind of looks odd for me but um, nevertheless if you can get a small specimen I think yellow tangs are you know personally pretty much the nice one of the nicest looking tanks you know just the massive vibrant yellow is um stunning and um if uh you know if they were cheaper in australia i would probably think of picking up one um just to let you guys know they retail for around 600 uh, australian dollars um over here obviously because of the ban um from hawaii uh so the last fish in the optionals is going to be a mandarin goby now um this fish is uh well you know to be to be pretty straight up it's it is a difficult fish to keep 
um, especially if you've got a new tank and I think um, sort of it's best to sort of avoid this fish for most people but um, if you have a you know a established reef tank and you believe you've got a good pod population and um, you know you feel you can put the time into this fish to to get it feeding um, I think mandarin gobies and reef tanks are an amazing addition and um, you know something I would I will personally consider depending how um, you know the refugium and stuff goes um, so yeah that's pretty much the optional fish wrapped up hope you guys sort of enjoyed the the video um, like I said at the start this is uh, my particular list so this is what you know sort of I'm looking at getting um, and what I'd currently recommend in regards to you know the state of the hobby what's you know readily available and um, and yeah I guess just pretty much you know where I'm at in terms of reefing um, the whole sort of uh, thing about this particular list is f for me it's it's fish that um, can sort of almost you know look after themselves in terms of um, being sort of easy to feed easy to care for and fish that I'm not going to have to worry about um, them you know chewing on my corals and you know destroying scollies and things like that um, that's why you you'll see a lot of you know tangs and angel fish missing from this list um, even rabbit fish for that particular matter um, just because you know through experience you see them um, do certain things and and uh, you sort of learn so um yeah that's pretty much it for the list guys remember um at the end of the day it's uh, it's ultimately <laughs> your decision um, which fish you go with but um, yeah I've got a few more interesting videos um, you know sort of on the uh, in the in the works just regarding regarding the state of the hobby and sort of um, where I think we're heading but nevertheless I hope you guys enjoyed this video and sort of uh, you know learnt something for it or maybe it changed your view on um, on some fish or you know gave you an idea if you were stuck um, thinking about what to stock your your 120 with so thanks again for watching guys um, you know like and subscribe if you took anything for this video I greatly appreciate it and if you made it this far you're a legend Peace, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye.